This is my brand new bullet journal. As you can see, it's completely empty and the cover's a little black. So I thought I would design and draw on the front cover, the back cover, the inside and the back pocket. <laughs> Let's see what I come up with. I'll be using my Copic markers for the blunt of the work, um, but first I'll need a pencil and start sketching out my idea. I did all my thumbnailing and like pre-sketching before jumping into the cover because I wanted to have a pretty good idea of what I wanted to draw before, you know, I like went all in. So I kind of came to the conclusion that I wanted to draw a bit of like a studious looking character, but like also fashionable and like, I don't know, like a college aged individual with fashion sense and then glasses so that they looked, you know, studious. <laughs> that was the idea because for me, bullet journaling has been really, really helpful for me to keep track of like my daily to-do lists. And that's how I use it. I use it just to keep track of what I need to do, what I've already done, and then, you know, just to make sure that I'm not missing out anything. And by writing it down and making little checklists has been extremely helpful. So when I think of my bullet journal, I think of being productive. I think of getting good grades. I think of just doing well in life. So I wanted to create a character who looked like they had a pretty good handle on things. So that is what I'm doing. I gave her a bit of a messy bun, those studious glasses, like I mentioned before, a fashionable outfit, and of course a backpack. Oh, and I also um, gave her a pencil sticking out behind her ear so that you know she knows how to check off her to-do lists, I guess. Then once I was pretty happy with the layout on the page and like making sure the character fit pretty well and there wasn't any like giant blocks of white space that just looked unnatural, I went in and started adding in the details. Now with all of my thumbnails, I'd never really put in a lot of details. So this was definitely a new step and it was time to really develop this character and make sure it looked the way that I wanted or well, I guess as close to the way I wanted that I could physically do. <laughs> so I was going in and adding the details to like the hair and making sure that the hair looked like it had a little bit of volume to it but it was also like sort of unkept and then like uh, the face I realigned the eyeballs a little bit better and made sure that she had a a forehead. This is something I kind of like mess up with with my art. I always like forget to give my characters foreheads and I have a pretty decently large size forehead so it's like <laughs> you'd think I'd remember that those things exist and give them to my characters so I wanted to make sure that I gave this character a forehead. And the glasses I had drawn originally weren't exaggerated enough so I decided to give her these giant circular glasses so that they're super obvious and you know that she's wearing glasses. <laughs> I don't want them to be too subtle. I want them to be you know Know, on her face in your face you know and to give her a little bit of originality and to pull her a little away from that generic Harry Potter look I gave little heart details to the rims of the glasses which I think is quite cute <laughs> And continuing the detailing stage, I went in and add some more details to like the ruffles on her shirt and defined her hand a little bit more so it wasn't just a plain little blob. I also decided on what I wanted like her pants seams to look like and like where they should go and the belt loops and things and also the like section, the bottom section of her shirt. I added like that cute little, what's it called, like a tie. So it's like a... It's kind of like a wraparound shirt and then it ties on the side so that creates that like v-neck that was the idea at least and then i added ruffles to the bottom of that because i thought that'd be really cute and it kind of like pulls in the ruffles on the sleeves and you know it's a cute little crop top thing i don't personally know a lot about fashion i'm kind of just faking it from what i've seen on pinterest and when I was happy with basically where the art was at that point, I just erased that top bun section. So I'm erasing a small section at a time and adding in the line art. It's kind of hard to see what's going on because of the camera angle, but I'm taking it very slowly, trying to add depth to any places that might be more in shadow than others. And basically just trying to incorporate all of the small little tips and tricks that I learned from doing Inktober back in October. It'd be kind of hard to explain what those are without you having experienced it yourself, but like, Basically, I use that word a lot, but what I'm trying to do is create depth in the line art so that it doesn't look too stiff. And that might include like not closing all the lines completely or using thinner lines for less obvious sections of like the hair and then thicker lines for like 
thicker sections of the hair. Does that make sense? Like parts that are with more depth get more lines and I'm also using like hatching for sections that would be more in shadow. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but the best thing I could suggest is that you just draw a lot and use a lot of line art and see what looks best in your style and what looks not so good in your style and kind of avoid those things and lean towards the things that look good, you know? <laughs> and the things that are fun, of course, also incorporate those. And usually when something starts looking good, it's a little bit more fun. I'm not gonna lie, that that's just kind of the truth. So <laughs> try to incorporate those things into your art and you'll definitely see improvement and maybe even have fun, you know? Woohoo! <laughs> One of my favorite things to add line art to is ruffles, so I'm just enjoying this a lot. Oh, I just realized I didn't mention what pen I'm using. I'm using a Prismacolor Premier um, Fine Liner, and this is the 05 size. I've tested this with my Copic markers a few times and it's always worked pretty well, so I've decided to use that for this particular drawing because I trust it. <laughs> With all fine liners, it's pretty important to, you know, give them their time to dry before you start attacking them with like any sort of wet medium. So, you know, just give them their little chance and always, you know, test them before you go in for your drawing. Oh, it's, there's nothing worse than when you've done the entire line art of your drawing and then you go in with like a marker and then everything just smudges. Oh, I've been there. After erasing most of the sketches, I realized I completely forgot to draw in the glasses with the pen. So that's what I'm doing right here, being very slow and careful, trying to get as perfect of a circle as I can with my free hand. And I'm quite happy with the way they turned out. Then I just finished up by adding the line art to her pants, adding in those seams. Those are so much fun to draw. And I was done with the line art. And so it was time to go in with the Copic markers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made sure there was no sketches left because I really don't like the way pencil lead interacts with Copic markers. It's just blah, blah, blah. So I made sure that was all gone. And then I used E15 to color in the skin. And I particularly in my head imagined her skin significantly darker than this mid-tone paper that I'm drawing on. And the cool thing about mid-tone paper is that it is a mid-tone. So you can either add lighter hues by using like an opaque pencil in the color white and you can actually draw with white, which is cool. And you can also get darker which is what I wanted to do for the skin. You'll notice as I'm drawing this that my E13 marker was definitely running low but <laughs> I was a little too afraid to try and mix it with another color so I kind of just wung it and um, by the time I get to the end I think it's a little less obvious because I go over it so many times so <laughs> just bear with me. And while I didn't have like a complete color scheme in mind when I started, because I didn't do enough uh, pre-planning, I did. I kept seeing the color pink and brown. So I was like, mm, those are the colors I'm gonna use. So that is definitely what I gravitated towards. I did end up using some more colors as well, but the cool, another, well, another cool thing about using these toned paper or this toned cover of this bullet journal, as it would be, is that the colors, um, because they have that mid-tone behind them, they all kind of create a bit of a cohesive color scheme no matter what color you pick. It kind of just helps them blend together. I'm sure there's some colors you could pick that would just be like, whoa, that's kind of way out there. But for the most part, you have a lot more leeway when you're picking colors.